Um, hello, everyone. So today I'm going to speak a bit about um, resource allocation models of uh, microbial growth. So this is a work we published, not yet, it's accepted for publication in the SIAM Journal of Applied Mathematics, Applied Dynamical Systems, with Jean-Baptiste Caillot from MacTau team, Jean-Luc Gosset from Biocorp, Idée de Lyon, qui, who works at Université Grenoble Alpes, and Francis Meret, who works at Eframer and Nantes. So, um, basically, the, the kind of questions we want to answer when we uh, approach bacterial growth from a resource allocation perspective is, for example, one of the questions, right? Is um, how does bacteria adapt to changes in the environment? So um, we know that this happens by reorganizing the gene expression, which can indeed be viewed as a resource allocation problem. So for example, I'm, I'm going to take the same problem we well, talked about yesterday. So it's a very simple resource allocation model. So the idea is that we have a bacteria that will eat substrate, will transform it into a precursor, and then the bacteria will have the choice of either uh, producing proteins from the metabolic machinery, which would be, for example, in science, or producing proteins from the gene expression machinery, which would be uh, ribosomes, for example. So what we know in bacteria is that enzymes catalyzes the absorption of substrate and the, uh, the production of precursors, while uh, ribosomes would catalyze the production of the proteins itself. So you see, for example, here you have a, a trade-off, a typical trade-off in nature. And this trade-off, we will model it through this uh, function alpha. So, uh, I mean, you can, you can imagine, for example, um, bacteria will like to maximize their biomass because in nature, that's what they do in order, in order to compete with other species for a substrate. So you will say, yes, yeah, so if I were a bacteria, I would put alpha equal one and I will maximize the production of protein. Yes, yeah, but doing so would, would stop the absorption of substrate. So it wouldn't be an optimal strategy, for example. And doing the, the, the opposite would be the same thing. You would have, you would eat all the substrate very fast, but you wouldn't be producing enough proteins, which is the, the most uh, heavy material in, uh, in cells. So um, there's a, a trade-off there, and this is exactly the kind of things we want to model through these very simple self-replicator models. Okay? So uh, I mean, this this paper I'm showing you. It's uh, based on, a, on an old paper from Giordano and uh, Anita de Jong. It was uh, done at Grenoble. And, um, and it was a very simple paper, but they proved the point. They wanted to show this trade-off. So what, what we did was to study a bit the literature. So we could find a very interesting paper, which is very well known. And um, so here they show, for example, a typical relationship very well known in, uh, in nature, which is a linear relationship between the amount of NRA, NRA, RNA, so the amount of ribosomes in a cell, and the steady state growth rate. So it's been a while, we already know this is linear, this is a linear relationship. And um, you can see for different nutrient qualities that you have points that, that follow a line, okay? But uh, I think that we can observe here is that um, there, is a, there is a bounce on the, the amount of ribosomes that could be in a cell, for example. So this is, this is something that happens in nature and that wasn't modeled in previous models. And we also see that, well, for example, this is also the model from Scott. You have ribosomes, you have enzymes. There's a huge part of the cell, of the proteome. The proteome is like the, the, all the proteins in the cell that, um, that is used to housekeeping functions. So these kind of housekeeping functions are functions that are do not affect the growth rate of the cell. They are necessary for, for living beings, but um, they will not contribute to growth rate. So they will not accelerate or slow down the, the, uh, the speed of the population. And uh, so we say, we see, for example, that in general, housekeeping takes up to 50% of the proteome. So it's, uh, it's huge. It's huge and it's also a modeling assumption we would like to include in a, in a generalized model. So what we did was to grab these two ideas and to build our own self-replicator model. So the idea is more or less the same. We have a substrate which is being consumed by, by the bacteria, and then we have, we can produce either enzymes, ribosomes, 
and this choice is made through the, this function alpha, which is between 0 and 1. So again, if it's equal to 1, you will be producing only ribosomes, while if it's equal to 0, you will only be producing enzymes, which we know is not optimal, okay? But um, that, that would be the extreme cases. And then we also added this, um, this housekeeping part of the cell, which are housekeeping proteins, which, as you see, they do not catalyze anything. So ribosome catalyzes the production of proteins, Enzymes catalyze the absorption of substrate. Housekeeping for this purpose don't do anything, okay? But occupy uh, consumed resources, and the consumption the consumption of resources is given by this constant gamma, okay? And this constant gamma is fixed because uh, of the experiment done by Scott. They showed uh, that they it take more or less about fifty percent of the cell. So uh, what we do? Okay, so we have these chemical reactions. Well, which is small as well, what we are, what I explained here, and we have we can obtain a simple dynamical system like this. So indeed, uh, for the precursor metal, that you have the substrate coming in and the what we the proteins being produced, Br. So if you if you sum all the three flows here, we will obtain just Br. And then we have uh, the ribosomes being produced at growth alpha gamma, and then we have here alpha uh, one minus. Uh, gamma 1 minus alpha for M, and fi finally 1 minus gamma for Q. Okay, so this is how the, the flows are being distributed, the, the resources in the bacteria are being distributed. So um, what I'm going to do, well maybe I'll go quick, uh, because uh, we're not yeah, so. so. Okay. No, no, no. It's well, okay. because uh, there is a, a lot of modeling. Uh, but uh, what, I, what I'm going to do here is uh, to define the volume of the bacteria in, in terms of R, M, and Q. So I'm going to neglect the precursors because they are not heavy enough. I would say they are neglectable with respect to the other proteins. And then I'll, I will define concentrations. Uh, so small p, small r, small m, small q. And I'll define also the rates uh, divided by the volumes to obtain. So it would be the same model. He said that now we have all, all, all the quantities in concentrations and we also have a dynamical equation for the volume, okay, for the bacterial volume. And so, uh, by definition, we have the term multiplying the V in the bacterial volume, which we will define as the bacterial growth rate, right? okay? And, um, and then what I'm going to do is to take a couple of as assumptions to simplify a bit the model. So VR, which is the flow, uh, which is the flow responsible of producing the proteins, I will model it, uh, I, will, I will suppose it's linear with respect to the ribosomes, and I will have this function in terms of P, and uh, they, then I will have for M, for the production, for the absorption of uh, substrate, I will suppose also it's linear on M, and then I have a, a certain function on S. And these two functions, WR and WM, I'll, I'll do a couple of uh, hypotheses. So um, to say it's, it's, actually, it's actually a generalization of the classical Michaelis Menten functions, okay? But you can, you can, you can think of these two functions of, as a mechanism of function, which, has a, which is a new at the origin, which is continuously differentiable, strictly increasing, strictly concave, okay, but will be a shape like this. And it would saturate at some point. So for example, here, if I take P uh, equal infinite, this will, will be equal to a value. It will be converged to a value, okay? And, and why this R mean? I, I know the answer. That's an excellent question. I know the answer, <laughs> but... <laughs> yes, okay. Well, as I, as I was saying before, the idea was to, to um, include these uh, boundaries on the, on the ribosomes, on the amount of ribosome in the cell. And so, uh, indeed, what we did was to model the growth rate of the cell in terms of some term that depends on the precursor, which it would be, which have a mechanism and shape linear on air, but also taking into account a certain threshold air mean. And then that's why we have a plus here, meaning that if air, air B is lesser, is uh, smaller than this uh, constant, there will be no, no growth, okay? And then we need a minimal amount of ribosomes to have bacterial growth. And that is what is represented here in this term. I have the definition here, so it's all only the, the value, if it's positive, if, it, if this is bigger than this, or zero otherwise, okay? Just that. Um, 
So then what we're going to do is to work with mass fractions. So we will, we will forget about masses and we will forget about concentrations. Yeah, a lot of notation, I know. That's why I wanted to go fast. <laughs> but uh, so this is the final uh, quantity, I promise. I'm, I'm not going to define any other thing. <laughs> we have a, now, very simple, P, R, R mean, M and Q. So this is actually mass fractions, meaning that this will be between zero and one, between zero and one, okay? So it's a percentage of the cell, if you want. Such that, for example, this quantity here, R plus M plus Q, is equal to one, okay? That's it, very simple. And I'm going to do a hypothesis too. I'm going to suppose that this flow related to S is actually constant, which would uh, mean that we have a lot of substrate in the medium. So we will, we will just um, assume there is no dynamics in the substrate. The substrate is, for example, being constant very in a very slow way. Okay, so for this, the cell ignores that the substrate varies. So we end up with this model. So now in P, there is no uh, this flow that depended on M. It doesn't depend on M anymore, so it's just a constant. We have growth rate depending on R uh, minus R mean. Again, we have the couple of terms also depending on R minus R mean. And we have now this constraint because I, re I, I removed Q because Q. Q. we have this what relation. What is the advantage to go from uh, concentration to Mass fraction, what, what do you gain? You can reduce your system? Or? Um, because it seems to me that it's uh, strictly equivalent. So I have a, a little less constants. It's good for the eyes. Mm -hmm. But then I'm, I'm, I work with constants because, um, in the first place, because I define all the flows in terms of the constants, because in the literature, everything works in concentrations. You yes. know? So we have a mechanism independent on the concentration. But then for mathematical purposes, we can just work with mass fractions. Yeah, so I agree that it's the same, but is there a simplification that you can make at this, uh, using that? Is that a funny question I guess, for example? No, no, no. No, it's, a, it's, it's rather a notation thing. Okay. So I have a whole paper uh, with uh, mass fractions, which is simpler to read, okay. and which gives an easier notion, you know? For example, here, it, uh, you have beta in the concentration, and you have no more beta in the... Yeah, indeed. So in the, in the system here, you have beta everywhere, which is this density of the, of the cell. You know, there's a couple of constants which are okay. taken just, from the literature. Yes, yeah. indeed. It's it's reading the same. Okay. It's the same. Uh, so again, again, I don't have Q anymore, but I know that M plus R has to be lesser than 1, otherwise it would mean that Q would be negative, which is not realistic. Okay. Well. And so uh, the, first, the first analysis of the system tells us that uh, actually R is bounded between R mean and this constant gamma that we define. So I'm going to forget about this gamma, okay? Because at the beginning it was just a constant in the rate, but now I know it's the maximum amount of ribosome I can have in my cell. So I'm going to call it R max now to re retrieve my R mean R max criteria I, I, I introduced before. And then I also know that this, given the, the, the invariancy of this set, that this condition is al always uh, met, okay? So I'm going just to remove it from the system because I'm going to analyze the system now. And I don't care about this because it's always met. And I'm go not going to worry about V neither for a dynamical study because as you see, V will grow exponentially. Well, I mean, uh, there, there's no, no point in studying this equation because there's no equilibrium here, okay? So I'm going to now for now I'm going to forget about this equation. And because it's the, 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 the absorption of substrate is not related to the size of the cell. Uh, yes, it is. The absorption so of substrate. So you need to. Why do you not? Oh yes, for for a dynamical analysis I'm not going to use the equation, but then it's yeah, of course it's important for the, this uh, when deciding alpha, for example. When deciding the, the allocation parameter, yes, of course, the, the volume is important. Yes, of course. But now I'm just going to do a, do a quick analysis of the fact, system. It has no equilibrium, so you will obtain something going exponentially yeah. yes. at the end. So it, you cannot analyze the dynamical equilibrium if you keep that. But for the optimization problem, it is uh, yes, but, but it's fundamental. Keep it, of course. Uh, so, yeah, so I did that. So, we, I mean, <coughs> very quick analysis, dynamic analysis. We have three equilibriums. The one that it interests us is the one where we have P star, R star, M star. 
the final like this. And we have uh, the stability of E1 related to a certain alpha min, so a certain minimal allocation parameter, which depends on these uh, bounds. Okay, just so you know. Um, this is not very important itself. Uh, so we define a couple of uh, initial conditions in the set that I introduced previously. Previously, and we can show that, for example, there is a minimal bound for each of the variables, um, which might not seem interesting, but in fact, this guarantees uh, the, the global stability of the system. I mean, the fact that we can prove that there is minimal bounds on each variable, um, and the proof is very, the proof is very simple. It just you just need to show that error uh, is bounded. And so then you cannot uh, you cannot stop the absorption of nutrients, and you cannot stop the production of proteins. Well, this is the, the most important thing. The, the two extremal situations are not uh, are not reachable from from this uh, gamma set. Okay. Uh, and then once we prove there is minimal bounds, we can also prove that every solution with the initial conditions proposed here and with the control bounded to this constant we just defined. Yes. What, what did pillow mean? Uh, pillow is the set of the piece. That's yeah, it's just a simple as a simple solution. Anyway. Ah, it has a simple yeah, solution. So it's a weird way maybe of writing it, okay? Like, yeah, okay. <laughs> it's a, it's a, it's a, uh, yeah, one solution. So it's okay. one value. And uh, yeah, so uh, we know that we know for a fact that uh, the system converges globally to um, not globally, but in gamma. You know, they converge to equilibrium one, which is the equilibrium of interest. Um, and so, why did we do that? Uh, we, we like dynamical analysis, but also because we want to calibrate the system mm -hmm. to, to represent the real bacteria, right? So, um, what we will do now is that. We have a lot of we have a set of uh, steady states depending on the allocation the steady state allocation alpha star okay so alpha star will decide on the steady state but now we want to obtain the maximal steady state steady state growth rate why we want to do that because that's what bacteria do in nature they maximize growth rate so in order to compete with other species okay that that is arguable I know there's a lot of point of view though but this is our hypothesis in this work of course. Yeah, because at each time I, I speak with either the young, it's like, mm, I'm not sure. Okay, in our work, we assume that bacteria maximize their growth rate, okay? Because they want to maximize biomass. And so we will look for the steady state that maximizes the growth rate, okay? So we, we'll, you have a, a curve like this. So here we will have a mass fraction error, which depends linearly on, on alpha star. So again, it's like, here you have the, the parameter, the allocation parameter, and here you have the final growth rate. And what we want to do is maximize the growth rate. And we see numerically that it's completely feasible. Now there's a, a, only one solution. Just to show you, but we, we can also show that there is a single, there's a unique uh, so analytical solution. Okay? And here I, I, um, I'm writing in terms of P because it's convenient for notation, but um, there is on only one solution, one optimal steady state in terms of uh, the, the allocation, okay? And why is that useful? Because now I'm going to use some um, data from real life, okay? So we have, uh, again, this uh, relationship between the amount of ribosomes in the, which now is mass fraction of ribosomes, so the percentage of ribosomes in the cell and the steady state growth rate. So we have, there's a lot of people that have measured this relationship. They showed there is a, um, there's a linear relationship that showed there's a minimal amount of ribosome necessary to have growth. And also they showed they have this a maximum one, which were, were part of our assumptions for the model. And so what we did was to minimize with a very simple least square uh, cost function to, well, to uh, fit um, the value, the steady state, the, optimal steady state of our model to this data, okay? And using Michael is mental dynamics, because uh, we have to do a choice at some point. And so what we obtain is this uh, curve here. So if you see it's exactly the same curve as here, but what I'm doing is matching each optimal steady state to a uh, nutrient quality. So here, for example, we have this one representing this one. So the idea is that um, our system, which is an dynamical system, but our system at steady state reflects the the real experiments from 
So um, I didn't say, but this is E. coli, okay? So not like every bacteria, it's just E. coli. So now we have a model that represents E. coli growing uh, at constant growth rate, uh, constant uh, substrate concentration, okay? C'est bon, hein? C'est bon, bon c'est joli. Ah. <laughs> Merci. Uh, <laughs> okay, so now we know what happens. We know this model. No? From the bush? Uh, we know this model is optimal in steady state, but now we want to see what happens in dynamical environments. Okay? So what we are going to do is to write an optimal control problem uh, where the bacteria is going to maximize. Well, here we, we take the log of the biomass, but we did just the biomass into four hours because it's simpler. And uh, well, the idea is that the, 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 the optimal control would maximize the growth rate subject to dynamics. Um, and now we can prove also that we have the turnpike phenomenon. So we have an expression, an explicit expression, which I do not even dare to read for the singular guard, for control, I mean. And uh, we can also prove uh, theoretically that uh, on the singular guard, the system and the singular control tend asymptotically to the static um, steady, to the optimal steady state, which is a strong uh, result because in general you're not, you're not able to prove these kind of things. Um, you can see in simulations that uh, the curve reaches the steady state, but I'm improving it analy analy analytically. Um, I was surprised. And it was very simple because we only had to watch. Um, like the derivative, the sign of the derivatives uh, changing in terms of which side of the static uh, solution we were. Uh, like this. It's very simple. Uh, so this is an, an optimal solution, which of course I obtained with uh, Bokov. So we uh, we see that we have this kind of typical behavior where a singular card is around the static solution. We have chattering on both uh, sides. And you see also in the, uh, in the in the states that the state um, reaches exponentially the static solution here and here and here we see the so what we will see here would be the composition the protein composition of the cell that's why it amounts to one so it's like percentages okay so we have uh, air going to to the optimal air star and we have uh, air and m going to air max. But I mean, this is very, very nice. It does not have a lot of colors, but um, it's not very realistic because actually in nature, we know that the housekeeping part of the cell is uh, auto-regulated by the cell. So a case where you have a fluctuation like this is not, it's not very relevant from a biological point of view. Uh, so we would like to maybe explore, use the results we obtain to explore more realistic uh, biological problems. Well, this is um, some stuff we do in optimal control. We verify uh, it's a second order singular card. And we also verify that the solution we found is optimal by looking at the sign of the term multiplying the control and in the fourth derivative. It's what is called the Legend or Klebsch condition. Um, just to say, I mean, it's optimal. You have to do it in that way. So now I will explore some biologically re relevant scenarios. So the first one would be a nutrient shift, which was the one that interests us in the beginning, at the beginning. So the case would be the, the following. We have a system that starts at a steady state. We have bacteria, which is in, in a certain environment, which is constant, okay? And suddenly there is a change in the substrate concentration. It could be a change in the substrate concentration, or it could also be a change in the substrate quality, for example, but it could be a change in, in the substrate, okay? And what bacteria will do would, would, would be to, to adjust the gene expression to maximize its growth rate. So we know she does that in steady state. We want to see what happens in the dy dynamical aspect. Uh, so we have a result, which is very simple to obtain, and that is if the system starts in a steady state, um, the optimal control and on the whole strategy is, oh, sorry, the singular card of the optimal control on the strategy is exactly equal to the static solution. Um, so it is something like this. I will show you with simulation. So for example, we have a system starting from a steady state with a certain nutrient quality, which, is, which represents, for example, a four medium, okay, 0 0.3. And then we have a sudden change to a better nutrient, okay? 
So uh, the system, what we, what we're doing in the dynamical way is to oscillate the allocation and then to stabilize exactly over the static solution. We present in, uh, remember that this line I spoke about where we have the relation between the, um, the ribosomal concentration and the growth rate, which was uh, taken from the literature. So exactly, that, is, that is exactly what she would do. And she would stabilize also the ribosomal concentration over the optimal ribosomal concentration. And the same for the precursor concentration. And so we also see, I mean, the idea is that here we start with a certain growth rate, which is related to a poor medium, and then bacteria will, as fast as she can, switch to the new growth rate, which is better, which is a higher growth rate because it actually represents a, a rich medium. Okay. So, um, voila. So this is the, this is what we wanted to see. Well, how a bacteria can uh, how bacteria can dynamically adjust to this new uh, situation. So this is a simple case, this is what we call a merchant shift. And then we wanted to see another situation which we found interesting too, um, which is a response to stress. So uh, I mean, it, it is well known that for, for certain stresses and bacteria, so for example here we have uh, the expression of an unnecessary protein, I don't have to go into detail, but for example when bacteria start producing a protein that does not contribute to growth rate, a part of its resources will be wasted in a, in a way, in a certain way. They're not wasted. No, they are. They are. They are proteins that are being synthesized to protect bacteria from this stress in particular, but at the expense of losing growth rate. Okay. So, for example, we see in this curve that um, when we produce more uh, unnecessary protein, we will lose in growth rate. Okay. So, what kind of situations can can produce this? We'll have, uh, for example, extreme temperatures, acid tre stress, or, or over expression of genes, which is this case. Uh, and so, indeed, the, 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 the idea is that the presence of this new protein reduces the resources for growth rate associated uh, um, proteins. So, for example, for ribosomes or for the cells. Okay, so, okay, this is the idea. We have almost almost 50% of the cell occupied that is housekeeping proteins. We have uh, ribosomes, we have enzymes. And at some point, uh, there is a new protein being synth synthesized that takes a part of the, the useful proteins of the cell. Huh? They are, they are, let us call it like, there, like that. Um, so we know this happens in steady state studies. We saw them because this is a, a steady state study. Huh? In general, they measure, they apply some stress, they wait a couple of hours, they measure, and they put a point here. Um, but we want to see what happens in a dynamical environment. So um, what we will do is to simulate that this Rmax constant is being reduced to an Rmax. This is an awful notation. I, I was never uh, actually sure what I was doing when I wrote it. I actually asked, do you like this notation? Nobody said no, but nobody said yes. So I left this one. So we have a, an Rmax which is um, smaller, okay? And that would constrain, of course, the allocation of this part. And we'll take a part for a W. And so what we would do is to create the new variable w, uh, which depends on this new value, which depends on the difference between r max and r max w. Okay. And so when we apply our results, uh, we, we we do that. Now we start from a steady state where there is no stress. So you see here at the beginning there is no w. They have a 50 percent of the bacteria using housekeeping proteins. 50% uh, using uh, RNM, so ribosomes and enzymes. And suddenly, Rmax is being reduced to Rmax W, and the cell starts producing this protein W facing a, a certain mass. We started the problem of maximizing the biomass, the biomass in a fixed time window for a static environment. So, I um, mean, the static steady state that, we, that is usually studied in the literature, but we also did a dynamical, uh, dynamical study. And we apply these results to the two usual cases in nature, which, you, which are nutrient shifts in the environment and stress situations that lead to uh, the production of an anti-stress protein. And so um, next step, well, um, I'm supposed to finish my PhD in two months, so I'm not that sure, but I'm usually right the next step. Right? So uh, I mean, a, a, a potential continuation of the work could be to 
to uh, work with the substrate dynamics because we did this assumption substrate is constant which is very realistic maybe in a, in a lab you're able to, to keep the substrate uh, constant but when, when you, in nature when you have a lot of species competing for a substrate not usually the case so that could be could be good voilà merci beaucoup merci, merci à toi Ok, merci. Donc, euh, salut Valentina, salut Vincent. Euh, je ne sais pas, la idée du divin, est-ce que Valentina...